Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Couch to Career. Thanks for joining us once again. My name is Courtney. And hello, everyone. My name is Savik. And as you know, Courtney and I work as career advisors in the Pomerantz Career Center. Uh, we're excited to bring you another topic today to help you with your career and your professional development. Today's topic is Adulting 101. So we're going to talk about some of those things that you need to be thinking about as you're transitioning into a new career, which is what many of you may be doing at this time. And we're excited to be joined by our colleague, Travis, from the College of Engineering. Travis, can you give us a little bit of background about you? Absolutely. Uh, it, well, first off, thank you again for having me. Uh, really excited to chat with you all. And uh, I'm sorry that I was the best adult you could find. Um, so my name is Travis Greenley. I'm our Director of Engineering Career Services. I'm over in the College of Engineering, and I've been here at the University of Iowa uh, for just about a year. Actually, my, um, my reunion is next week, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but a little bit about myself. So I did my undergraduate uh, career at Augustana College in the Quad Cities, um, so not too far from our, our campus um, over in Iowa City. And I did my grad work at Western Illinois University, where I have a master's in college student personnel. And a funny thing about this adulting 101 um, topic for today, so at my previous institution, I actually coordinated an entire series on um, adulting 101. Um, so I'm really excited to chat a little bit more about this because it's hard. Some of these skills, you know, we don't, no one really teaches us them. You just graduate and you're expected to know these things. So um, it's a very relevant topic and one I'm excited to chat a little bit more about uh, today. Awesome. Thanks again, Travis, for joining us. So we have a wide range of questions that will allow Travis to share his perspective and his expertise in. And if you think of a question as you go, as you watch this video and that we didn't cover, feel free to leave those questions in the comment section below and we'll follow up with you with an answer for those. So with that, Travis, let's jump on into our first question. Okay, so our first question that we have for Travis is, can you tell us about like what, what types of challenges my um, new grads face as they enter their first career? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I think, so I've got three points. The first one is feeling like, feeling like you have to prove yourself. So as a new grad, you're entering this, this company where you're going to be surrounded by people some with varying experiences, um, some of which have been at that organization for a number of years, others not so much. And, and right off the bat, you're going to want to you show that, hey, I was the right candidate. I was the good fit or I am a good fit. So, which I think is very normal. And um, I think kind of taper that back a little bit and just remember I'm, I'm the right person for this job and they chose me for a reason and I have the skill set necessary. So just be yourself. And I think, um, so the second point is being a yes person, right? You're new, you want to make a good first impression. So you might overcommit. Hey, um, Sav, can you can you help me on this project? Courtney, can you help me do this? Yes, yes, of course, yes. So then you find yourself really overcommitting, and you're you're stuck at work late hours, and you're coming in early. And although those are those are good things to show that you have a strong work ethic, I think really taper the items you do say yes to and the th items you do say no to. And um, when in doubt, ask a supervisor. Hey, do you think I should be taking on extra things? Um, or is that not a good idea right now? What, should, what are your expectations of me in my first couple months? I think creating some of that open communication right off the bat will be really helpful. And then the third point, of course, is um, I think you need to spend a little time trying to learn kind of the ins and outs of your organization. What are some of the politics at play? And that's not to say that politics are a bad thing. I think they're very natural. Um, people have different leadership styles and some of those come to the forefront a little bit more than others. And you're going to want to learn kind of how to navigate that. And, and how do you, um, I, I guess, navigate, how do you navigate that space? So Travis, what would you recommend a new grad do to prepare for their first day of, on the job? Mm -hmm. First day, it's important. Um, I, I know for myself on that first day, you always want to, this is going to sound cheesy, but you always want to be wearing some, like maybe, maybe it's one of your favorite shirts or it's a good luck shirt. Um, you can laugh while you want, but that's, I truly did that on my first day. I wore something I, I wanted to be seen in. Um, so I think about that first day, I kind of go through a checklist and um, I guess first we should acknowledge that it is totally normal to be excited and nervous. Those are absolutely real. And I would actually, I would question you if you weren't nervous or excited. I might, I might say you're lying. Um, but I, so the first step would be know where you're supposed to go. So I can think back to when I started um, my second professional job. I was working at the University of Tennessee, and I was a new resident to the state of Tennessee and and new to that institution. And I had no idea where I was going. 
So um, I had map quested. That's that sounds old. I had Google mapped um, where I was supposed to go, and naturally I wound up in the wrong parking lot. So I was paying an additional parking fee, um, and I barely made it to my orientation in time. So that's a that's a story to tell you. Don't don't be like me. Maybe drive to work ahead of time the week before or a day before so you know where you're supposed to park because you don't want to be worrying about that, right? You have so many other things to think about. We don't need to spend time wondering, oh, shoot, was I supposed to take a left on that one way? And um, so do yourself a favor. Look it up ahead of time. Secondly, know that your first day is going to be, this is an assumption or in a generalization, but it's going to include a lot of paperwork. Um, I can think back to when I started, um, I had a summer internship at the Rock Island Arsenal and that was a government job. And, um, I was, I I mean, that whole morning I was filling out paperwork and I I had not memorized my social security number until that morning when I had to put it on like 12 or 15 forms. So your first day, you're going to fill out a lot of forms. It might be a little overwhelming. HR is going to talk about, um, retirement as well as some of your benefits and, Um, parking. And I I mean, there's just going to be a lot. And I would say to prepare for that, if you can peruse the website and just get, make sure you're a little bit more familiar with some of those HR terms or even um, what some of those benefits might look like. That way you you might be a little bit less overwhelmed um, on your first day. If you have that option, I think that's a really good decision. And I think the, the second part of that is know that unless they tell you, Hey, we need this form before you leave here. Otherwise, take your time. Don't feel like I have to, you have to make all these decisions right now. You may not be in that headspace to really think about, well, do I want the in-state retirement or do I want that private company retirement? Um, and I, I can't even remember back to the terms that the University of Iowa, um, our retirement, we've, we've got two packages. I don't remember which one I chose. Mm-hmm. So maybe I need to go back and refresh myself. Um, <laughs> but don't feel pressure to make all those, those decisions in that morning or that day. Give yourself some time, um, whether... You can then chat further with an HR professional later on, or even maybe your supervisor. You might inquire with them, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about which retirement you chose and why that was a good fit for you? Um, I think that's a great great, uh, a great a resource for you to begin utilizing early on in your time. Okay, so Travis, I know that one of the things that make, makes people nervous when they start a new job is thinking about how do I find a community here or make new friends? Do you have any tips for that? Mm-hmm. Well, first, let me say, I wish I had a five-step process to making all the best friends in the world, um, but it's, it's, it doesn't really work that way. It's a little bit more organic, but I do have a couple ideas. So first, when you think about your coworkers, you may or may not end up being really good friends with a couple of your coworkers. I'm going to be honest and probably say not all of them, um, but I think making friends with coworkers is helpful. Another piece of that is when a coworker says, hey, Courtney, do you want to come out to trivia? Why don't, why don't you guys come out to trivia and join us? Even if you're the worst trivia player in the world, P.S., they don't need to know that up front. Um, but even if you're terrible at trivia, you need to go. And you need to go because you never know what kind of, or you never know who you might meet at that trivia. You don't know what friends of friends that they've invited and what their partners do. And maybe you learn that you have a connection with your undergraduate institution. We both went to Iowa. Oh my goodness. Now we can start connecting. Um, so you, you stop it. You're smiling at me. Um, but you just, you never know how you can be connected to others and what you might have in common. So pushing yourself to go to that social experience, even though it's Friday, you've had a long week, you're tired, you want to go home and watch Netflix. I do think going and pushing yourself, especially when you're in that early stages of starting that new job. I think that's the best decision to help you socialize. Um, Secondly, I want to mention a resource. It's called Meetup. It's not a fantastic website. It's not a fantastic app, but it is helpful. So Meetup is kind of, it's kind of like your student org fair, right? So you go to Meetup and you type in ultimate Frisbee or yarning or knitting. I don't know if yarning is a word. We're just going to move past that. Um, But it helps you find those affinity groups. So people that craft, people that like board games, and I've used that personally a couple of times to find different soccer communities. So when we lived in Tennessee, um, I used that to find an indoor soccer team to play on. And I've used it here in, um, in our Iowa City area to play on a team as well. So that definitely helped me get connected um, to a, my affinity, I guess you will say. And I think the third thing would be um, Facebook groups, which is not rocket science. And I know that our students today aren't quite as into Facebook as, as maybe we are, or even, even my parents are, or our parents are. Um, but Facebook groups can also be helpful in finding those affinities. 
um, a group of people that go and they, they frisbee golf on this day of the week at this time and it's free. Um, so I think just being open to trying new things is also is, is pretty key in making new friends. And it is important to note, it's not going to be awesome every time, right? It, it might take you a couple of weeks to really find someone that you connect with. Um, and that's okay. And that's normal. And um, you don't have to see them again if it, if it wasn't a great connection. Um, you just might have to think about what those excuses are. So Travis, what would you recommend telling our new graduates when it comes to balancing their time with work and uh, personal? Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I think, I think balance is hard. Um, I think that it's going to take some time to really develop some good routines to where you know that I need to go to bed at this time if I'm going to exercise at this time and then I'm going to go to work and I, I might be at work late. I mean, so it's going to take time to really navigate and figure out what the best routine is for you. And um, a key phrase that I often think about or use whenever I talk about balance, it's, it's kind of an illusion to think that the scales are going to be equal. So I like to think about it as negotiation. Right. So if I work X amount of hours or if I get this project done, then I'm going to spend two hours at the gym or I'm going to go spend two hours frisbee golfing. Um, so it's all about for me, that's how I like to envision it. It's, it's about negotiation because those parts don't always equal, which I think I, I always struggle with. And I know this is a language thing, but I get hung up about that on, in regards to balance. Um, and then when we talk about the balancing your work and your time away, um, I think something that I struggle with is, especially in a new job, is the idea of taking vacation. And um, I think there's guilt with that, or at least I, I can't speak to everyone, um, but I know that sometimes I feel guilty taking a vacation day or taking a couple of days off. But in reality, no, I earned those days. I have those days. It's part of your standard benefits package. Don't feel guilty taking vacation. Do that. Especially, I mean, right now it's it's summertime, although we can't go a lot of places and be social, but you can go to some places. Um, don't be afraid to take vacation as long as you've discussed that with your supervisor. You know that it's not a crazy busy time for you. Um, so do that for yourself because that's how we recharge. That's how we get excited about our work um, is because you've taken time for yourself. You've been away. All right, now let's hit the books on Monday morning and, and really um, start the week off strong. Okay, Travis, thank you so much for answering all those questions that we posed to you. Any final piece of advice or words of wisdom about adulting? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, so this kind of goes back to my values and I, I value relationships very highly. Um, so I think relationships are really critical in everything we do. So especially as an entry-level professional who's starting out in their new role, I strongly encourage you to build relationships. Um, you're, a new, you're a new person, you're in a new place, and those relationships are really going to help you thrive in that environment. Um, and for anyone that has moved, whether you're moving to a new city or a new state, I think those relationships will be even more key uh, because when you need to figure out, well, I need to find a vet, I need to find a dog groomer. Yes, as you can tell, I have a dog. Um, but, but those are recommendations that they're they can be costly or they can be priceless if your coworker can, can, can tell you, hey, we've tried these four mechanics. I didn't like that one, that one, that one, but we love this one. They give a, a nice discount on oil changes after your fourth oil change. So some of those things are, they're really valuable and they're not the, the things that come to mind um, at the forefront or not, they're not the first things you think of when you start a new job or move to a new place. So um, that, that will be my, my ending words is build relationships because um, they have a lot of perks. And of course um, it's just nice to have friends, right? Yes. That's Thank you for everyone. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank Good you deal, again for Travis. having me today. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it and learning a little bit from you about some of that, those good adulting tips. So that concludes our video today. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us again for another brand new episode of Couch to Career. Check back every Tuesday uh, to check out our new content. The easiest way to do that is to make sure that you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date. So from our couch to yours, have a great rest of your day and go Hawks.